What's up guys? I hope you all are having a great day today. This is one of those videos that I'm just really looking forward to making a response video to because I watched like the first three minutes of it and at that point I knew I absolutely had to respond to this video. Now big shout out to Prince Stick Figure for the recommendation on Discord man. Really appreciate it. Link to the Discord will be on screen right now with that shameless plug out of the way. The title of this video we are going to be watching here today is why PC gaming sucks and consoles are better. Now the amount of big brained logic in this YouTube video is absolutely outstanding bro like this man could be approaching the mythical 300 iq man like i'm just throwing it out there this dude makes some really great points in this youtube video so i think without further ado guys i don't really think this video needs much more introduction let's go ahead and check this shit out and find out how pc gaming absolutely sucks hey guys so welcome is down here just sitting on the floor as usual hey guys what's up just another typical day of me laying here on the fucking floor Hey guys, so welcome is Dan here, just sitting on the floor, as usual. So, what I would like to talk about today is something that I had a huge argument with one of my friends recently. And the thing is that we were thinking, what is better, PC or consoles? I mean, to answer that question, you need to define what better actually means. Because I think anyone can make a case on which platform they prefer. But, you know, if we're talking objectively better, I am really interested to hear what you're going to come up with. In terms of gaming, of course. Oh, well, then it's PC. So nowadays you'll see that PC gaming is pretty popular, like on YouTube and anywhere on the internet, really. And there's even uh, subreddits like PC Master Race dedicated to just, uh, you know, making fun of console gaming in every way possible, right? I mean, you really have to love the fact that he's using a cringy circle jerk subreddit to represent the entire PC gaming community. But to make it even better, the first post that he shows is literally them highlighting how you can use your gaming PC to help fight cancer. And then it's some dude showing off a custom PC build. Then it's some dude saying, look how cool this is. This guy's playing Breath of the Wild on his smartphone. And then finally, it's like this harmless meme that's kind of cringe, to be honest. But let's definitely paint a picture of the entire PC gaming community based off of one cringy meme on a circle jerk subreddit subreddit. That definitely sounds like a great idea. So the thing to remember is that a lot of people will be in PC gaming from the start because, uh, you know, everyone who's watching this and everyone has an internet connection will probably have a PC. Wow, what a great observation. I mean, what can I say? This is definitely some groundbreaking analysis here. And not everyone has a console, of course, just to play games. I mean, sure, back in like the early 2000s and early 2010s, people were buying PS2s and PS3s for the DVD player and Blu-ray player. I don't really think that's the case anymore. I don't really see many people rushing out to buy a video game console to do much other than play video games. I mean, if that actually was the case, the Xbox One wouldn't have sold like complete dog shit. And uh, the thing to keep in mind here is that, you know, you buy a PC to do work. You buy to do your homework. Do some coding, like video editing. I don't know, I'm gonna go out on a limb here and say there's probably more people out there buying a PC for video games than there are people buying it for coding or video editing. With just a flip of a switch, you can actually turn it into a pretty decent gaming machine, right? And uh, this uh, sort of allows this one device to do basically gaming and work at the same time. The barrier to entry is a lot lower. So what this means is that this uh, device can be very multifunctional. I mean, it's almost like he's praising gaming PCs, but just you wait, guys. He'll find a way to make this a negative thing. So you can start playing games right away with just your keyboard and mouse. You know, sometimes you might not even need a mouse at all. You can just use your keyboard or, I don't know, a touch screen maybe if your computer has that, right? So that's also a problem in my opinion because that's also a problem in my opinion. Look, here's the thing. Fine. Listen, I'm um, gonna be honest with you. I, I'm kind of retarded. <laughs> I'm just warning you guys, this shit's about to get really fucking dumb really fucking fast. So, you know, hold on to your brain cells for dear life. Because it means that it can get distracted a lot more easily. 
So it's a bad thing that you have an all-in-one machine that can do everything you need it to, from work to playing video games. You know, that is a negative thing to you because you get distracted easily. Like, bro, you must hate cell phones. But it really just shows you what an absolute brainlet this motherfucker is. Like, imagine saying that consoles are better than PC because PCs can do more than console. Like, you literally cannot make this shit up. Uh, you know, you're doing your work, you're trying to focus on the task, and there is that Steam icon right there on the desktop, two clicks away. You know, it's really easy to just slip back into gaming when you're actually supposed to be doing something more productive. The desktop, two clicks away. You know, it's really easy to just slip back into gaming when you're actually supposed to be doing something more productive. Wait, this is supposed to be a bad thing? The second thing is that PC games are built to be used with a keyboard and mouse uh, most of the time. Sometimes they might add a little bit of controller compatibility. I mean, if you really want to call the fact that Steam has native controller support for Nintendo, Xbox, and PlayStation controllers built in as what you call a bit of controller compatibility, then I don't really know what the fuck you're looking for, dude. And I think you'd be pretty hard-pressed to find a video game that's released on PC in the past 10 years that doesn't have native controller support. I mean, if you really want to get technical about it, PC has more controller compatibility than any of the consoles. I mean, unless I'm wrong here, the last time I checked, you can't really use a PlayStation controller natively on an Xbox and vice versa, so I think I'm going to go with the fact that PC does have more controller compatibility than any of the consoles do at this point. And such that. And the problem here is that say you want to play 10 different games and for each game you need to remember something like 20 different key combinations to actually be efficient. Damn, bro, that's crazy. It's almost like you have to do the exact same thing on controller when you play different video games with different control schemes, dude. It's really amazing how that works and actually be competitive, something like, I don't know, uh, Warcraft or Starcraft. I mean, yeah, what better way to prove your point than bring up two games that haven't been relevant on PC in like a decade, bro, and in before somebody says, well, actually, you literal piece of shit, World of Warcraft is still relevant, and to that I say, I'm not talking about World of Warcraft, I'm talking about the actual Warcraft series. You know, like Warcraft 3 Reforged, which was a complete failure, that basically no one even gave a shit about. Now, another reason why I stopped liking, uh, mice and keyboards in general for gaming is because you're just stuck uh, with this uh, big brick on your desk with this uh, little mouse and that's it. Then buy a controller or buy a bigger mouse, bro. Really not that hard. There is no motion controls. Fuck. Wrong. That is absolutely Wrong. proved over and over again. Wrong. The no fancy multi-search gestures and all sorts of stuff like you see, I don't know with a connect. Bro, this has to be the only motherfucker on planet Earth that is actually flexing the fact that he has a connect. Or with an Oculus. You do realize that Oculus Rifts only work on the PC, right? Like, that's not lost on you? But what did I tell you guys? I told you, we are going to be witnessing a man who is approaching the mythical 300 IQ. Or with a Switch, for example. Wrong! With those Joy-Cons. Now, in general, it is also a lot easier to start playing games on console. Oh my god, you're so right, man. Having to click play on Steam once is such a huge inconvenience. If only there was a way on PC where I could just use my controller to pick whatever game I wanted to await their Steam Big Picture mode. Now you just turn it on, click on your game, and you're ready to go. There's almost no setup needed. You don't have to configure your video drivers. You don't have to, you know, fill out with the settings. I'm gonna be honest here, I haven't really messed with drivers or video game settings in probably a couple months at this point. It all just works straight out of the box. There's almost no maintenance costs, you know, sometimes you might have to charge the battery on a portable console. You know, sometimes you might have to do a little update here and there, but you're not stuck with something like two hour long Windows update, right? Bro, what type of dog shit computer are you using that you have a two hour Windows update? So, to actually be competitive in PC and gaming, you need to have the best CPU, the best GPU. That's right, man. Unless you have an i9 and a 3090 in your computer, you can get the fuck out of here, dude. You're not a real PC gamer. You will never compete with a real PC gamer. You are literal human garbage. But of course, this dumbass thinks that a CPU and GPU determines your skill in a multiplayer game. You need to have a stable 
fast internet connection. Who would have guessed, man? You have to have a stable internet connection to play online. But hey, dude, PC gaming sucks, am I right? To even start playing a game properly. It needs a very expensive high refresh rate monitor. I mean, that's literally like saying that you need a high refresh rate, low response time, 75 inch 4K TV in order to do well on console. Are we really gonna go down this road? A good keyboard, a good mouse. I mean, why would you buy a shitty one? And it's just very unfair. So is life, get over it. It's very unfair because not everyone has a few thousand dollars to chill out on a good gaming PC and good peripherals. Not everyone's gonna spend a couple thousand dollars in order to get a PC. You know, it's a lot more democratic. I don't know about you guys, but nothing screams democracy like a multi-billion dollar corporation and a multi-trillion dollar corporation telling you exactly how and what you can play on your console that you just paid for. Once again, man, if that doesn't scream democracy, I don't know what the fuck does. In the console world. In the console world, everyone has the same system. Absolutely. Wrong. Everyone has the same specs, the same hardware, the same peripherals, uh, more or less. That's right, man. He said more or less, so we can just take his word for it, dude. Let's just look at the PlayStation side. You have the PS4, the PS4 Pro, and the PlayStation 5 all in the same player pool. You know, the PlayStation 5 has 120 FPS support. The PlayStation 4 only goes up to 60. Some people might have a 720p TV. Some people may have a 4K TV. Some people may have a 60 hertz TV. Someone may have a 120 hertz TV. Someone could be playing on a monitor. Someone could be playing on a larger monitor with a higher response time. Like, you can even break this shit down to the controller. Someone could be using a PS4 controller. Someone could be using the PS4 controller with a little paddle extension on the back which gives you an advantage in multiplayer games someone could be using a ps5 controller someone could be using a ps4 scuff controller with multiple paddles on the back trigger stops like motherfucker you're not gonna sit here and act like oh these are minuscule differences and then act like it's a massive fucking difference on the pc bro like honestly i mean if it wasn't obvious enough at this point this dude obviously has no clue what the fuck he's talking about i mean who would have guessed that a dude literally laying on his floor might not be the most intelligent person on the platform and uh, it's uh, just a lot more fair in my opinion to everyone who buys a console. Now, if we talk about performance, uh, then of course you won't have the same level of performance on consoles as you'll have on a very good high-end PC. And in other news today, water's wet, the grass is green, and the earth is flat, motherfucker. But uh, what I've noticed is that you don't actually need all that performance. What I mean is that developers uh, most of the time we'll actually do some very clever optimizations for our consoles. And the surprising thing is that if you take the same uh, specs on a PC and a console and you play the same game, it'll actually run a lot better on a console. And of course you have nothing to back up that claim whatsoever. You know, I don't even know why I'm expecting anything from this video at this point. I mean, shit, this dude was so lazy he couldn't even sit up for a video. Because of all these little optimizations. Now, this actually makes developers work in a more creative way. I don't know, it's, it just seems a lot cooler to me. For example, when I fired up Xenoblade 2 on my Switch, I was just blown away by how much they could pack into this tiny little device that I can you know, take with me to the toilet, <laughs> take with me to the subway, take with me anywhere really, onto a plane for example, and I want to look ridiculous with a huge bulky gaming laptop, for example. You know, I love the Switch and everything, but I think it'd be a little bit more awkward to see a grown-ass man hunched over playing a Nintendo Switch in public than using a laptop. Call me crazy, I don't fucking know. Now, another thing to mention here is actually the games that you can play on a PC and a console. So, what you'll often see is that some games are actually released on consoles first, or they are better optimized on consoles. Yeah, nothing makes me want to boot up a video game like optimization on a console which locks the game at 30 FPS. Now Rockstar Games is actually quite famous for giving a preference to consoles. They started developing for them in the first place. And then maybe after, you know, half a year or a year later they'll port the game to PC as well. I don't really think they're giving preferential treatment to any platform, if anything, they just want you to buy the game twice, bro. Like, they know if they release it on console, people are gonna go out and buy it on console, then when they release it on PC a year later, the same people who bought it on console, who also have a PC, are gonna go out and buy it again a year later for $60. When it comes to Rockstar, I think the only preference in terms of platforms they have is the fact that you buy the game for every single platform you own. Now... If you want the latest and greatest, you'll actually end up having to buy a console anyway if you want to 
keep up with the latest games. In my two years of PC gaming, I really haven't encountered that problem yet, but you know, who knows, man. Maybe there's a game that'll come out that I literally just cannot wait for. Now, there are also quite a lot of exclusives on consoles as well that you can't play on a PC. No shit. Or that only come out in a few months down the line. And Nintendo consoles are a really great example of this. Now, some of the best games on the planet are only available on Nintendo consoles. I mean, I kind of agree with you, man. You know, that's why, in addition to my PC, I also own a Switch. What can I say, man? I guess I'm a real gamer since I have multiple video game platforms. And uh, just one game is actually enough to sway people to get that particular system. And, uh, yeah. Now, you might say that on consoles, uh, you're only stuck with 16x9, uh, Full HD, in the best case scenario, you know, maybe 4K 60 on something like an Xbox One X. And uh, you can't enjoy games anymore if you have anything lower than 4K 144 Hz or something ridiculous like that. Bro, no one is actually out here saying that in order to actually play a video game, it has to be a 4K 144 FPS, bro. That sounds like some major fucking cap. And I think that's actually untrue. Because in order to enjoy games, you don't really need that much. You know, 50 years ago, people were just fine with something like Punk or Tetris. I mean, he's got a point, man. Just a short 50 years ago, our forefathers were okay just playing Pong. They were okay with playing games like Tetris. It didn't matter how they looked. It didn't matter how they ran. But in the 50 years since then, we have lost touch with what truly matters. We actually expect video games to look and play well, to feel good when we play them, not just have core gameplay mechanics. And you know what? We as gamers need to get our priorities straight, man, because in the span of 50 years, we have truly lost sight of what truly matters. And that uh, definitely wasn't above even 100 pixels uh, horizontally. You know, I have this uh, Nintendo 3DS right here, and the screen is only something like 240p. And that was completely enough to keep me entertained for a week while I was on a trip in Italy. Bro, this man's out here flexing. He's going, yeah, when I was on a trip in Italy, you know, I just had to bring my 3DS so I could be entertained. Well, you know what? I saw your 3DS, and it's nowhere near as impressive as my 20th anniversary limited edition Pokemon 3DS, so get in my level, bitch. And uh, that's actually a huge benefit, I think, because, you know, a screen with fewer pixels consumes a lot less energy than you think. So I could go ahead and play my games for four or maybe five hours at a time and not have to charge it at all. Well, that's it for me for now. Make sure to subscribe. Make sure to like, dislike, you know, hit that bell. Well, I will admit I did one of those things. It wasn't liking the video though. It definitely wasn't subscribing and I definitely didn't hit the bell. So I wonder what it could be. Well, that's it for me for now. Make sure to subscribe. Make sure to like, dislike, you know, hit that bell. Uh, just do anything, please. I don't even have money for a desk or a table. That'd be pretty helpful. All right, bye. Bro, this man's down bad if he's having to beg for likes and subs on YouTube so he can buy a fucking table, dude. Like, Jesus Christ, man. I don't know. That's probably the most pitiful ending to a YouTube video I think I've seen in my entire life. But you know what? I think the key takeaway here is console gaming is just superior to PC gaming in every single way. PC gaming is complete fucking garbage, and you're better off just buying a 3DS, dude. So hashtag 3DS Master Race, rise up. You know who you are. And shout out to all the people who have the um, special Pokemon 20th anniversary. 3ds like me you guys are real ones but anyway guys you know what that is going to do it for today's video if you did enjoy it please drop a like on it i would greatly appreciate it and as always i do want to thank you all so much for all the recent support on the channel like it's just been absolutely insane especially on the live streams bro like i've been live streaming a lot recently because there really hasn't been much to make videos on because you know january is typically a pretty dry month for gaming so i may have to expand into some other topics so who knows man i'm just trying to upload or at least put out some sort of content so shout Shout out to everybody who comes by the streams. I really do appreciate all the support. And as always, I want to thank you all so much for taking the time out of your day to check out this video. And I will catch you guys next time. Also, please hit the bell notification so I can buy a table.